Vision is one of our most trusted links to the outside world, but you can't always believe everything you see. Magic tricks, for example, take advantage of our brain's vulnerability to illusions. Two researchers from Barrow Neurological Institute decided to travel the world and meet with magicians to study why the brain can be fooled by magic tricks. The result of their efforts is a book titled Slights of Mind. Here to talk about their findings are Stephen Macknick and Susanna martinez Condi, along with magician Tony Barnhart, who will perform some magic tricks as the two researchers talk about the science behind illusions. Good to have you all here. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Susanna, why did you write this book? Well, the book reflects a collaboration that uh, we as neuroscientists have been carrying out with magicians for the last five years and trying to figure out uh, magicians and neuroscientists, we have uh, a lot of overlapping interests in the manipulation and the understanding of attention and perception and cognition. So we realized that we have a lot to learn from magicians in terms of the techniques that they use and the conclusions that they have arrived to about the workings of the human mind that we can bring to test in the laboratory and that also have very real implications for everyday life. Uh, in terms of defining terms, uh, Steve, what is cognitive illusion? What does that mean? Well, so if you think about a visual illusion, it would be one of those uh, posters you've seen where something comes out in it 3D, or you've seen on the printed page, it's, it's a, a stationary image, but it looks like it's moving. Those would be types of visual illusions. Or 3D at the movies when you wear the glasses. Um, Cognitive illusion is that it works on the same principles in the brain, but now instead of operating in the visual system to give you these these percepts, they operate in the cognitive parts of the brain, and that allows you to have certain sorts of cognitive illusions. For instance, you might not see something that's actually there because you're paying attention to the wrong thing. And, and the idea, and, and Tony's going to do some, some examples here in a second, but the idea that we learn, how do we learn how the brain works from some of these illusions, these cognitive illusions? Well, at the barrel, what we'll do is we'll actually study uh, the brain while they actually do various sorts of tasks, and we'll figure out how it is that uh, the brain operates while doing them. And some of these tasks will be things that cause illusions. So, for instance, magic tricks would be a type of il cognitive illusion, or we might so sh show certain other sorts of sequences in which uh, someone has to pay attention very closely to one thing happening, and, and they miss something else to show that, for instance, multitasking doesn't, doesn't actually exist. Uh, Susanna, was there a magic moment, if you will, when you realize that these guys, these guys hold something that we can learn from? There was. Uh, Steve and I, we were asked to co-organize the annual conference for the Association for the Scientific Study of Consciousness. And this is an academic meeting, and uh, we, we wanted to, to host it here in Phoenix, but uh, they told us that that would be too hot in June, and we should go to Vegas instead to have it there. <laughs> and uh, well, the, the board of the association wanted to go to Vegas. Yeah. So we said, okay, we'll do it there. And so uh, we wanted to do something special for our conference, maybe bring some uh, art and science together, something uh, to do with illusions, because as uh, neuroscientists, we use illusions a lot to, as tools to understand what the brain is trying to do, how it constructs our experience of the world. And Vegas basically gave us the answer. We were thinking about how to bring art and science and the public together, and we saw this uh, everywhere, these giant posters of uh, Penn and Teller and Lance Burton and all these great magicians. So we realized that uh, magicians are these uh, masterful manipulators of attention and awareness, and we should really be talking to them. Okay, well, let's talk to one right now, mm -hmm. a master manipulator himself. Uh, to Go by the name of Magic Tony? Magic Tony. All yes. right. Um, what are you going to do for us first? What are you going to show us? Well, here? I thought uh, since tonight's show is all about science, maybe we should do a quick and dirty experiment. Would you like to play? Uh, sure. Why not? All right. So I've got a deck of playing cards here. I'm going to run my thumb down the edge of the deck, and I just want you to tell me to stop anywhere you like. Stop. Right there. All right. You've selected a card. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to the camera. I'm not going to look at the monitor, I promise. All right. <laughs> so you had a, a free choice of any card in the deck. Uh, so we're going to try a quick experiment. So some people think that crystals hold some power. They think that they can magnify telepathic energy. So I thought if one crystal has this much power, why don't we try 10,000 crystals? All right. See if we can really amp this up. So I spared no expense, and I brought along 10,000 crystals with me this evening. Okay. So what I want you to do is concentrate on your card. 
and I want you to send the thought of the card to the base of the salt shaker. It'll shoot up through those crystals, it'll be magnified, it'll shoot out those holes, and it'll hit me right in the brain. Yeah, we could wish for a larger target. Sure. But... I'm, I'm focusing. I'm concentrating. <laughs> right. You've got it. I'm seeing it. Ooh. Ooh. Getting something. Your card is the color of a cherry. Is this correct? A black cherry. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, ooh, that was close. Enough. Yeah. Uh, it's a club. Is it a club? Yes, it is. In fact, is your card the ace of clubs? It is right. the ace so, of clubs. So that's amazing. But what's even more amazing is that if you look through the deck, in fact, you will not find an ace of clubs. There's no ace of clubs in this deck of cards because that's the card that I keep underneath the salt shaker. <laughs> <laughs> All Your right. Ace of clubs. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. Now, <laughs> what did he just do? I mean, obviously, Magic Tony has special gifts, but he can't. <laughs> what, what happened here? Well, what happened is that what he do when he, he actually, as you can imagine, put the card beneath the salt shaker, and that was right in front of your field of view. The information was arriving to your eyes, and you were looking, but you didn't see because you were not paying attention. You were paying attention to the wrong thing. The spreading of the cards, that's something that we call in cognitive neuroscience a top-down attention or uh, attentional capture, is a wide movement, a very striking, that captures your attention, and you cannot see something that is happening simultaneously that is a more subtle motion, such as sliding a card underneath the salt shaker. So you basically did that as you were sliding yeah, the card. Absolutely. Would you like to see it again? I guess so. All right. <laughs> I've already played the full so, one, so I might as well do it again. <laughs> so I'm not going to tell you how I got your card where okay. I needed to be, but it was, I did have it palmed. And so all it <laughs> took was a spreading of the cards while I placed the salt shaker over your I just did it again. I just, I, just, I, I just looked at the cards again while you just did it again. But interestingly, it probably didn't fool everybody at home because there's a big social component to this, too, that doesn't travel through the camera. Explain. Well, a lot of the, the tricks that, that magicians use involve where they're looking. So if I look at my thumb, for instance, People at home are also wondering why am I looking at my thumb, or if I, if I point up there, sure. this is called joint attention. And magicians pump that like a lab rat pumps a cocaine lever, right? <laughs> they really want to control you and where you're looking and where you're thinking. And one of the most powerful ways to do that is to pay attention to it themselves, but in a false way. They're really not paying attention to that. They're doing something else. All right. Uh, you have another example here for sure, us. Sure, sure. We'll do something with some... Uh some old antique silver dollars. Uh, it's a trick that uses four silver dollars and three hands. I only have two. Right. So uh, right. <laughs> I'm going to need your help with I this. I see this can one coming. Your, sure, can I your sure. Right hand? All right. All right. So what's going to happen is one at a time, I'm going to make these coins travel invisibly through the air into your hand. All right. So would you hold out your hand for me? Right. Palm up. Here we go. We'll make the first one go. You'll hear it. Go, Steve. And there it is. The first coin traveled invisibly from one hand to the other. That leaves three coins. Right. Let, let's try it again. We'll make this one a little slower. <laughs> See if you can hear it. All right. There it was. There, there we go. The second All one right. all the way over there. Now, <laughs> you may be skeptical of what's happening here. Let's try it again. I want to make it as fair as possible. Here we go. One from there over to here. <laughs> One coin left. <laughs> now, okay, so you're developing hypotheses by this point. Yes. You might think, you might think that it's traveling up my sleeve. I, I don't want you to think that. Steve, would you hold on to my sleeve? Hold on to my, yeah, very nice. Yeah, that's quite a killer grip. <laughs> Here we go. Let's see if we can make it happen. And the last coin disappeared. All right. Um, you want to explain? <laughs> do you want to explain what happened here? <laughs> well, there's a couple things going on here, but one of the things that, that Tony was doing was he was changing the method every time he did it. So he wasn't actually, I mean, obviously he was moving the coins from one hand to the other somehow, but he wasn't doing it the same way every time, which is part of the reason that you had a hard time figuring out what he was doing, because as soon as you saw it happen one time, you're like, oh, maybe he did that, and then the next time it would be something different. Um, but another thing that he was invoking was divided attention. So he was actually getting you to pay attention to more than one place at a time, which, like a sucker, we all did. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, yes. <laughs> and uh, this keeps you from uh, allocating your attention uh, effectively to either place. So this gets back to the issue of multitasking. When we 
create our attention in our brain or when we, we have attentional spotlight where we enhance what we're paying attention to but everything else is suppressed. And the harder you try, the more everything else is suppressed. That's one of the things that Susanna and I have discovered in our work in the brain as well, that this is exactly what's happening. And so what was what what he was doing was he was getting you to pay attention to one thing, suppressing any of the information that he that he may have otherwise revealed when he was doing something in the other place. And, and that again is part of how the brain works. In terms of energy, there's only so much energy to focus on one thing. What's the speculation here? What's the thought? Well, our brain has limited resources. First off, it has to fit inside of the skull and that's a limited space. So we have limited neurons, limited neuronal connections, and the brain really does a lot of guesstimation of what's out there. And most of the times what the brain guesses, it's what's really happening but magic tricks are designed to take advantage of the brain's limitations. And as a magician, Tony, I mean, I, I would imagine things like, like humor or like other, th as long as you have someone's attention over on X, you can do anything you want on Y. Absolutely, and humor is integral to, to magic performances. That's why a lot of magicians become uh, sort of amateur comedians alongside it, because the moment someone understands a, a joke, all of their attention gets suppressed, all their external attention, and this is, uh, there's no evidence for this yet, but hopefully it's coming along soon. So when I'm doing close-up magic with people and I have to do some piece of sleight of hand, I like to time it so that the sleight of hand happens with the punchline of a joke. It seems to reduce the odds that people will uh, detect the sleight of hand. Well, this is fascinating. We've got a 30-second slide. Steve, what do we take from all this? What should we learn from all this? Well, I think the, the, the main thing that you want to take home from this is that uh, you, you can't multitask. Multitasking is a myth. So don't try to text or email while you drive, because while you're doing one, you're not doing the other. So and and the other thing is that that you're, you have a spotlight of attention where you enhance things and you suppress everything else, and that's how magic works. All right, great stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. It was fun.